The Old Farmer's Almanac has been around since 1792, and the reasons why are really pretty simple. It has always been useful with a pleasant degree of humor. It has remained virtually unchanged. Robert B. Thomas himself would recognize the calendar pages even today. It looks forward and it looks back. Every issue has a perspective on the future and its predictions, whether they be weather or trends. And it looks back to follow through on traditions and bring those to mind to readers. And you know, we can't, we can't excuse or forget the idea that there's been a little bit of luck or maybe a lot of luck depending on which particular year. If Robert B. Thomas, founder and first editor of the Old Farmer's Almanac, were to read today's edition of his creation, there's no doubt he would recognize it as his own. He would know it was his creation he sold for a sixpence, about nine cents, in Boston bookstores and by peddlers throughout the New England countryside when George Washington was President of the United States. Today, the format and type of material that Thomas established over 200 years ago has basically remained unchanged through 13 editors, 23 publishers, and by our rough calculations, 79,000, yes, I said 79,000, sunrises and sunsets. Robert Bailey Thomas, elder son of William and Ezuba Goodale Thomas, was born in Grafton on April 24, 1766. Thomas was brought up doing farmer's chores and attended the district school, and at other seasons were taught by their father, who was considered a scholar in those days. My father was a great reader and possessed a larger library than was generally kept in a country town. I spent most of my leisure hours reading, and no one scientific work engrossed more of my attention than Ferguson's astronomy. I derived much pleasure and satisfaction from the plain and familiar manner in which he treated the subject. It was then that I first imbibed the idea of calculating an almanac. Returning home in 1791, after teaching in Boylston, he pursued bookbinding. While in Boston, he met Osgood Carleton, a mathematics teacher, to instruct him in astronomy. Two years later, he released the first edition of the Old Farmer's Almanac. In August 1793, before leaving town, he met two young printers, Joseph Belknap and Thomas Hall. He made an arrangement that they could keep a percentage of all that was sold. Two years later, he released the first edition of the Old Farmer's Almanac. I have thought proper to entitle it the Farmer's Almanac, as I have made it my principal aim to make it useful to that class of people. Centuries ago, the publishing industry was quite a bit different than it is today. Back then, the printer handled the distribution, the selling, even the editing. In 1797, Robert B. Thomas took it upon himself to separate those functions. He broke it out into the printer and the publisher alone. He also introduced his two patrons, which today is still our letter from the editor. It, his was an opportunity to thank his readers for buying his book and also to acknowledge his contributors. After Thomas published his first edition of what he called the Farmer's Almanac, he continued to compile and record data for future editions. However, the almanac story is not a mundane one, and over the many years since it was conceived, it has faced many trials. When the almanac came out in the fall of 1815, it had snow for the following summer, July and August, snow. And of course, it was uh, Robert B. Thomas was the editor, still published under the name of Robert B. Thomas. He was a laughingstock, but he tried to destroy all the copies. Apparently what happened was the January-February forecast had kind of inadvertently been transposed with the July and August forecast. Well, he, was, he destroyed every copy he could get on, but he couldn't get all of them. 1816, Mount Tambora out in the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia, erupted. The dust from that volcano was circling the globe for the following six months, lowered worldwide temperatures three or four degrees, and yes, it snowed in July and August. It was called in the history books, the, the summer of no summer. The word old was added into the title in 1832 by Robert B. Thomas because at that time, prior to his almanac, there were several other almanacs published throughout the United States. Ben Franklin had his almanac and there were many, many hundreds of farmer's almanacs. So he wanted to distinguish his almanac from the other farmer's almanacs. And in 1836, he dropped the word old from the title because he did not want his almanac to be perceived as old and irrelevant. The almanac continued to be released annually, establishing itself in the marketplace. Thomas went on to publish 53 editions throughout his lifetime. And in 1846, he died at the age of 80. 
supposedly reading page proofs for the 1847 edition. Well, John Jenks um, was a very important editor. Obviously, he succeeded Robert B. Thomas in 1846, and he made a few changes, but in essence, he kept the almanac the way it was under Robert B. Thomas. Um, another element he added was Robert B. Thomas's signature to the preface of every issue, something we continue till today. In 1848, he added the word old back into the title, again to distinguish that our almanac had been the oldest almanac in continuous publication. I think his most enduring legacy was the introduction of the yellow cover in 1851. And that yellow cover with the depiction of the Four Seasons painting by Henry Nichols has endured all the way till today. The 2010 edition is so reminiscent of the um, 1851 edition. Now we have the Robert B. Thomas on one side, uh, Benjamin Franklin, who had nothing to do with the Old Farmer's Almanac, on the other side, and the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And it's been that way since 1854. Quite famously, Abe Lincoln used the Old Farmer's Almanac to defend um, a man accused of murder. The witness saw him by the moonlight, and Abe Lincoln famously used the Old Farmer's Almanac to prove that the moon couldn't have been in the sky at the same time of night when the witness said he saw him. So there was no way uh, that he could have seen him. Then in 1861, Charles Flint improved the farming section when he earned his spot as editor. Although dry, the important and lengthy farming tips helped many New Englanders. After Flint, the old farmer's almanac passed through the hands of various individuals who all contributed their part to its evolution. Well, John Tilston and Loomis Campbell published from 1872 to 1876, and then was taken over by William and Robert Ware, and they lasted all the way until 1900 when Horace Ware took over. And Horace made some changes to the almanac, making it a little less scientific and a little more practical. In 1933, Carol Swan took over at the Old Farmer's Almanac. His significant contribution at the time was the introduction of the first high-quality photograph, and that was of Calvin Coolidge. In 1936, Roger Scaife assumed leadership here at the Almanac. That was during the Great Depression, and a lot of farm families were moving from their farms to their cities looking for work. As a result, circulation here at the Almanac plummeted. We went from selling several hundred thousand copies to 88,000 copies in 1938. Of course, it doesn't help that Mr. Scaife dropped the weather forecast from that issue, and he ceased looking back on past ways. That has made him infamous in Almanac history. 